Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I thought I'd do something a little different based on um, a video by Shelley, uh, Shelley Swearingen that I just thought sounded really, really interesting and it's such a fun, clever idea. So um, for backstory, Shelley was uh, looking into um, Jane Austen and was sort of reading up on her and sort of just kept, basically kept on finding out all these sort of facts about her that she hadn't previously known. And so what she did really cleverly, I think, is sort of take those and basically make it into how alike Jane Eyre, uh, Jane Eyre, how alike Jane Austen are you? Um, and uh, I thought this was really fun and really clever. So I'm going to give this a little go. It's sort of, it's 10 questions where you give yourself point scores. Um, and it's a sort of a little bit of a get to know you, but also um, a kind of get to know Jane Austen. Um, and so let's see if this, <laughs> this 32 year old, <laughs> homosexual from London uh, is at all like uh, the wonderful Jane Austen. So let's go. So uh, the first prompt, um, Jane Austen was an artist and writer. Give yourself a point, sorry I'm reading this off another little thing here. Um, give yourself a point uh, if you're an artist, give yourself an extra point if you are a writer. Um, I would not call myself an artist in the sort of broader sense, um, at least, I, I mean I do write, so I'll, I'll give myself a point for writing. Yay, go me, with my very irregular writing schedule. Um, so I'll do that. Um, I mostly write sort of short stories and novels that have not yet seen the light of day, possibly for very good reason. Uh, they're not that great. But uh, it's, uh, yeah, fun nonetheless to think of that. And you know, Jane Austen herself sort of had a broad range of skills and, and kind of was interested in so, so many things, as many young women were at the time as well. There was this whole sort of thing around accomplishments of kind of what what do you do to kind of sell yourself in a marriageable way. Um, and something that I found, there's a, there's a board game um, uh, where you try and marry people in Jane Austen's time. It's a really fun board game. Uh, and um, the <laughs> the kind of part of the thing is you, you are you are one of the, the women in a Jane Austen story trying to get all of these accomplishments. So, you know, becoming better at the piano forte or, uh, you know, improving your beauty or your charm or your wit um, in order to to attract one of the suitors. Um, it's, a very, it's a very weird game, but very fun and does involve at one point a card that tells you that you accidentally ate too much venison at lunchtime and lost a couple of, of charm points. It's a very weird game. <laughs> I, when I played, I, um, I ended up, I just kept on sort of, my character just kept on increasing her beauty, but beauty was sort of shown as hairpins. And all I could imagine was my character by the end was basically like a stegosaurus with all of these hairpins being like, I am beautiful and nobody can tell me anything different. <laughs> I, di I didn't get married in the game. It, it didn't, it didn't go well. Um. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that aside, next prompt. Um, so Austin was born to a large family. She had a total of seven siblings, one sister and six brothers. Give yourself a point if you have three or more siblings in your family. I do not. I have the one sister. That is enough. And uh, that is all I will say. I, I, I come from a fairly big family, but our kind of side of the family, uh, well, at least my sister and me is, you know, it's, it's, it's just us. But yeah, there we go. Um, number three, Austin did not enjoy her formal education. Give yourself a point if you did not care for school. I don't think it will surprise anyone watching this that I loved school. <laughs> I think I just have that vibe. I think it's the jumpers I wear. I think it gives a vibe of this kid evidently loved school. Um, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I always got on really, really well with school. I also acknowledge I'm one of those people who my learning style very comfortably fits with the style taught in school. Um, they're sort of very lucky in that respect. And I used to be a teacher. So, you know, what other, what kid who, who would hate school at 11 wants to be a teacher when they are also 11? Um, that, that was me. I live a very cool life. Please don't judge me. You're welcome to judge me. Please, please do. <laughs> Number four, um, dark humour is woven throughout Austen's writing. Give yourself a point if you have a grim sense of humour. You, you must share a dark joke in order to get this point. So here, here comes the, 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 the tricky bit where I'm not quite sure. I think my, my humour is fairly dark. I, I'm generally quite an upbeat and optimistic person, but then watching me play something like a sort of Jackbox party game or something along those lines, I go in. <laughs> <laughs> that is my one time that I have that outlet, I think, so I, I, it's sort of pretty horrendous. Um, but um, I don't know if I can share those. 
I mean, let's just say many of them end up being rather adult in in tone and very dark to boot. So uh, let's just leave that there. I'll I'll happily not give myself a point if it means I don't have to try and dredge up something from the swamp that is some of those jokes. Uh, there we go. Uh, but yes, dark humour is is done really beautifully. I think in Austin's um, Austin's work. Am I deflecting here? Who knows? Uh, but no, I mean, I think genuinely she does do dark humour very well, of kind of characters sarcastically sort of jabbing at each other um, in the background. Um, in Pride and Prejudice, I think that's done really beautifully with uh, the sisters all kind of, um, oh gosh, I can never remember her name. There's that one sister who's a bit of a liability <laughs> and is constantly just um, uh, the one who gets married really early. And she, um, what I find really interesting about her is uh, all the way through everyone's like oh my god it's her again is it lizzie no no lizzie's maybe um no lizzie, yeah it's it's the the really young one who just sort of runs off and marries at the first chance she gets and um i i kind of love her because she's so like you can just see everyone in the family being like oh god it's her again what is she like okay um so yeah i think that dark humor in that book is done really really beautifully um Number five, Jane broke off two engagements and died a spinster. Give yourself a point if you are single. I'm giving myself a point. Hey, woo, love this for me. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm being read by these questions. I feel like this is a sense of judgment. I mean, nothing wrong in being single, but I think it's kind of, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'll, um, I'll put this on my profile or something somewhere. Thanks. Um, and I know as I'm going to go back and edit this video, editing Bob is going to have a fun time looking at this and being like, Bob, this is why you're alone. <laughs> so, there we go. Oh, Bob. Um, next, um, Austin experienced low periods or spells of depression. Give yourself a point if you have struggled with mental health. Um, I don't, I don't know how much I can give myself a point for this. I've struggled with bits around anxiety um, and sort of body dysmorphia and various other things. Not really, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think it's necessarily been depression, but if that counts, I suppose anxiety and body dysmorphia probably does within that, then there's a point, I guess. Um, number seven, Jane moved away from her childhood home in her twenties. Give yourself a point if you've lived away from your childhood hometown or region. Um, so I'm currently back <laughs> in my hometown, but I did live abroad for several years. So I was over in China, in South Korea and in Austria, which is significantly nearer than the other two and, uh, and loved it. Um, but that, that, and then was also in, you know, I was away from London, essentially with that and, you know, and then other parts of the UK, I was away from London for about 10 or 11 years, um, which is great, but it does mean that I'm now back in my childhood home at 32, kind of being like, I don't think I really ever was an adult here. <laughs> I left sort of when I was about 19, um, so it's still very confusing. Anyway, uh, so I do, I, I, I get a point for that, yay. Points points mean prizes, or, or mean Jane Austen, in a sense. Um, number eight, Jane was not vain. Give yourself a point if you have very little interest in vanity. So, I mean, I feel like my general overall appearance is probably enough to show that I'm not particularly vain because clearly I, I gave up caring a long time ago. Although this is quite a nice shirt, I've realised. So, yeah, let's go for that. But then I also do realise I spend, you know, a couple of hours a week not only talking to camera, but then having to go back and edit and look at my face constantly for the, all that time. So I don't think I necessarily, I'm not, I don't think I'm naturally vain, but I feel like I've spent a fair bit of time in recent months, and well, the last year, basically, not only being on Zoom chats and occasionally trying to sort of sort my hair in the background. Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't change anything. It still looks terrible, but um, that, and, you know, I now obviously spend a lot of time on booktube looking at my own face. So that's fun. So maybe a half point? I don't know. I'll, I'll have to think about that one. Um, uh, number nine. Hair was of little concern to Austin. Give yourself a point if you cannot be bothered with your hair. I get a point. Number ten. <laughs> Austin expressed her distaste for hot weather. Give yourself a point if you dislike the heat. Um, anyone who saw me sweating through the entirety of my video on Wide Sark SOC or on Ian McEwan um, can probably attest to the fact that I don't deal particularly well with heat. And in fairness, those were hot days. But, I mean, anything over above, 
by 10 degrees, I'm probably suffering. Uh, so <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm not very good in heat. I am sort of essentially made for endless spring or kind of late winter. I come alive during that time. It's my favourite point of the year anyway, just because of watching things grow and, and everything. Um, and it's sort of all, you know, everything feels like it's moving and it's coming alive. Um, but then clearly I suffer as soon as we go any further into that. Again, when I lived in South Korea, it, it used to get to like 38 degrees in the summer with 100% humidity and I just died. <laughs> I spent most of that <laughs> and they were about three months long those summers. So I'd sort of just spend a lot of time just hiding in my flat trying to like sit under aircon or just kind of actually going shopping because um every like every sort of mall or sort of shopping center or whatever was just really well air conditioned <laughs> and so you just sort of spend time sort of sitting there like please thank you this is wonderful this is beautiful please never stop um and then constantly got colds as a result because my body was going from 38 degrees to 18 degrees on a daily basis um on a regular basis rather um so yeah um all of that was a really long-winded way of saying don't really get on with the heat so let's see where that leaves us in terms of the scores okay so i've done the maths um and by maths i mean counting to six because i got six and <laughs> that means uh according to this that um the, the following. You and Jane Austen are friends. You two could enjoy a long walk in the country and chat about all of the things that you have in common. I like to think that's fairly accurate, actually. I think <laughs> Jane, Jane and I would have a nice little chat. It would be a little bit kind of sarcastic and, and dry. Um, we'd have a nice little walk, maybe a little picnic. Um, she'd tell me all about the sort of society, the ladies and, and gentlemen of society who are terrible human beings, but um, <laughs> are kind of pretending to be a certain way, um, who I think could be really quite fun, actually. Just the sort of, her kind of takedowns and her observations of characters, I think, are, um, are great. And so I'd really love to see that. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I enjoy this. This is really fun. So I think, please do go and check out Shelley. Um, the original video is really fun anyway, just to learn a bit more about her. Uh, but I also think it's just really fun, just because it's a bit ridiculous to kind of go through these and really have this sort of, you know, really silly fun um, of kind of going through and, and kind of uh, being able to sort of laugh about uh, some of these things and laugh at yourself. So yeah, please do go and check out her video. I think it's really good fun and really worth it. Um, and it just leaves me now to tag people. Um, I would love to hear um, from a few people um, I, um, uh, Alex over at what page are you on? Um, I know that has, has sort of published a video before about uh, Jane Austen talking about his sort of his favorites and I would love to hear his thoughts on this because I think um, he would have some really great ones um, and I think his sense of humor is, is really dry and sarcastic as well so I'd love to see how he takes to some of these questions. Um, I would also love to tag uh, Larry over at Larry Has Opinions, also because this man is brilliant and hilarious um, and, and is well worth checking out. Um, ben over at Doom Antidote, I think could do a really fun job of this channel and I know, I know is someone who's read sort of uh, some Jane Austen um, before. Um, I'd also love to tag uh, Ms. Reads a lot. I think she'd be really fun um, at this. And um, a new booktuber who I've been really enjoying called Jennifer Loves Books. I always have to check that because for some reason my brain defaults to putting reads in the middle there. Jennifer Loves Books. Um, it's true. That's the, <laughs> that's the thing. But go and check her out. Um, she's also really interesting and really fun. Um, and I would love to hear her thoughts on this. Um, uh, and apart from that, um, also AJ Dunn over at um, AJ Dunn Reads and Writes, I think would have some really interesting thoughts. I've been Bob the Booker, making a fool of myself as usual, uh, but um, I hope you've enjoyed this and take care. Speak to you all soon. Bye bye.